Are you tired of losing money trading cryptocurrencies? Sign up for my free trading AI with over 50% monthly return on your investment. Link is in the description. And I want to discuss why the Ripple SEC case won't be resolved in this video. I haven't had a view like this in a very long time. I discovered that about 95% of SEC cases ended in settlement after researching numerous prior SEC cases. I therefore assumed that this case would follow in the footsteps of all those other cases and result in a settlement as well. I just spoke with a very smart lawyer, and she explained to me why she didn't think the SEC case would be resolved. I'm going to share what she said with you in this video because it's fascinating information that will help you understand why Ripple and the SEC were unable to reach a resolution in this matter. I'd like to start this video by quickly addressing a comical FUD article about Ripple dumping XRP that I still occasionally see on cryptocurrency Twitter. As Mickey B. Fresh explains in this article, even after Ripple released XRP onto the market, the inflation rate for XRP is only 5.4% making this one of the wackiest stories I have ever seen put forth. Therefore, the first lesson we should get from this is that XRP is consistent with the inflation mechanism seen in nearly all of the main cryptocurrencies now in use. We also need to be aware that, conceptually, there isn't even inflation for XRP because there will only ever be 100 billion XRP in existence. Although Ripple is constantly adding more XRP to the market, ultimately it will run out. It's crucial to realize that many of the people who criticize Ripple for selling their XRP on the secondary market are actually holding Ethereum, which has an endless supply. It just keeps expanding towards nothingness. At least with XRP, we are certain that there will only be 100 billion. Additionally, we are aware that Ripple was intending to sell XRP on the market when we purchased the cryptocurrency. It makes me laugh so hard when individuals from outside the XRP community try to portray this as something negative. Ultimately, when Ripple sells its XRP, the proceeds are used to expand the ecosystem. They are developing new validators, contributing to the funding of various initiatives, awarding grants, and taking steps to improve the XRP ledger. The only reason Bitcoin and Ethereum miners sell their coins is to make money. They are only doing it to make money quickly. And I find it hilarious that all these folks who aren't XRP investors are having issues with Ripple but are blind to the fact that the same thing is occurring, only worse, in the blockchains they own. The main reason I want to talk about this is because I believe it's crucial to realize that when you read narratives like this, the authors are merely promoting their book. Actually, there is no sense in what they are saying. They are such blatant hypocrites that they won't even consider the fact that the same thing is taking place on the systems they control. And the final thing I want to say here before I move on is that whenever folks like this attack Ripple and the XRP ledger, they usually do so using talking points from 2013 and 2014 when they criticize Ripple and XRP. Since the XRP ledger is ultimately gaining more institutional and widespread adoption than any other cryptocurrency out now, they never want to discuss what is currently going on. XRP will become the first cryptocurrency with guaranteed transparency in the US market thanks to Ripple, which is presently fighting the SEC in court. These topics are not at all what these people wish to discuss. Because it's the only thing they can use as a starting point for a story they think they can develop around, they want to concentrate on how they didn't like the way Ripple dispersed XRP back in 2013. They will fail miserably if they attempt to create a narrative for anything today. They use these talking points, which have been debunked for years, as a result, which is why. But you guys, they'll just miss out. And I simply believe it's crucial that the XRP community avoids falling victim to something similar. Moving on, I'd want to discuss some information that was provided to me regarding the reasons why the Ripple SEC lawsuit hasn't settled and why it won't in the future and I found it to be extremely fascinating. Now, the lawyer who provided me with this information is well known, and I found what they were stating to be extremely logical. Now I want to start off and just break things down because a lot of people are saying that Ripple is battling for all of cryptocurrency, and that's why this lawsuit hasn't been resolved. Stuart L. Dorati recently released a statement in which he said, 
It is more valiant to actively promote justice for all and bear the consequences than to make a deal with a corrupt authority for the benefit of one's own comfort and gain. Stuart Alderati is effectively suggesting that it makes much more sense for Ripple to fight for all of cryptocurrency because it is the moral thing to do at this point. We won't strike a deal with the SEC, which is waging war against this sector. That would be improper. Ripple is trying to act morally. Ripple intends to fight the SEC tooth and nail in addition to obtaining clarity for XRP so that the rest of the cryptocurrency sector may benefit from whatever decision Ripple makes and whatever contributions Ripple makes in their own battles with the SEC. Now, I do believe that this is largely true, but I believe that there is a very crucial point that has to be made. Stuart Alderati expressly stated in a Coindesk interview from only a few months ago that if the SEC is ready to come forth and provide XRP with clarification, this matter would resolve tomorrow. Now, I believe that contrasts sharply with what he is stating here, and I want to explain how that could have happened. Therefore, I believe it is important to realize that Ripple's approach to battling the SEC has altered over the course of the case. If the SEC had made a settlement offer to Ripple the day after filing a lawsuit against them and said, Okay, you know what? We made mistakes. Not a security, XRP. Please pay this fine so that we can continue. Ripple probably would have accepted that. But the situation is completely different right now. At this point, Ripple has already given the SEC the buttocks kick. They have made the Heinemann records available and it appears that Judge Torres will provide XRP with the clarification it requires. Ripple would benefit greatly from this, thus there is less motivation for them to really reach a settlement with the SEC. The truth is that this case is practically finished. Even if the SEC offered a settlement, they have amply demonstrated that it would probably not be done so in good faith. Why bother at this stage then? Why even give the SEC what they want at this point? which may be a settlement. Just have Judge Torres come down hard on them. I believe those to be some key considerations, but there is also another crucial issue that needs to be made clear to everyone. The SEC believes it still has a chance in this situation. The SEC now doubts its ability to classify XRP as a security. That won't ever take place. The SEC still believes they have a possibility of requiring Ripple to register any future purchases with the SEC, nevertheless. Therefore, Ripple would need to register such sales with the SEC if it ever planned to sell XRP again for a profit or to raise money for anything other than utility, like ODL. Why then would the SEC be so adamant that it take place? Ripple will probably be a trillion dollar firm someday. In 10 to 15 years, Ripple will probably be selling XRP for hundreds of billions of dollars. The SEC is interested in taking part in that transaction. The SEC wants Ripple to record those sales and keep a portion of the proceeds. The SEC is attempting to get involved with these Bitcoin enterprises, and they may succeed. Since the beginning of this lawsuit, I have maintained that XRP is not a security token. However, there is a scenario where Ripple might need to register with the SEC in the future if it wants to offer XRP to institutional investors only to raise money. Furthermore, it's not need to be. I'm simply letting you know. There are knowledgeable lawyers at the SEC who have informed me that while they have little chance of succeeding in their claim that XRP is a security, Ripple may decide to register future sales. Therefore, the SEC still has a slim possibility of winning despite how poorly they have performed. Therefore, Ripple must report any upcoming sales. In light of this, you could be asking yourself, why wouldn't the SEC just offer Ripple a settlement declaring XRP is not a security, but you need to record future sales? Ripple would never accept that settlement, so that explains why. Ripple has a potential that the judge will simply decide that XRP is not a security in the end. You can choose how to sell XRP. And in my opinion, this is the underlying cause of the lack of a resolution. The SEC believes there is a good probability that Judge Torres will rule that Ripple may use XRP and ODL products, as well as for utility. However, if you simply want to trade XRP to raise funds it must be registered and Ripple believes there's a potential Judge Torres may publicly declare. You know what? Not a security, XRP. 
It can be sold however you like. Furthermore, the SEC and Ripple will never concur on these two arguments. In the future, if Ripple decides to sell XRP for hundreds of billions of dollars, they won't want the SEC to be involved. Ripple would rather take the chance at this time and go to trial in the hopes that Judge Torres will simply grant them their requests. Furthermore, that is not SEC registration. The worst case scenario of XRP being classified as a security is already eliminated, according to Ripple. And I believe that these are some very crucial topics to highlight for you guys so that you are fully aware of what is still up for debate in this situation, as well as the fundamental problems that are actually at play. In this case, I believe there is still debate over whether Ripple will have to register future sales for profit or future sales for charitable purposes. The essential thing, in my opinion, is that Ripple probably realizes that becoming a security at this time for XRP is out of the question. And I want to discuss one more thing that John Deaton recently tweeted. Although it maybe pertains to what we were just discussing, this is simply amazing. Furthermore, Ripple never requested that Judge Torres throw out the SEC's complaint. The ludicrous assertions made by the SEC that XRP was a security prevented Ripple from even asking Judge Torres to dismiss the lawsuit. Ripple had the option to take this action. Therefore, we must question, why didn't Ripple request a move to dismiss? And I believe that's because Ripple has always known they needed this case. Ripple was always on the right side of the law, therefore it was obvious that the SEC had made a serious error. The presence of XRP in the system was obvious as day. Ripple was aware that the SEC was entangled in this situation. Because the SEC brought this lawsuit, Ripple was aware that, whether they liked it or not, they would ultimately provide XRP with clarification. And I found this to be incredibly intriguing because it demonstrates how sure Ripple is that they are following the law and that XRP will receive the clarification it needs due to the SEC's own stupidity. It demonstrates how Ripple's plans have come to fruition exactly as anticipated. The SEC has been outmatched by Ripple throughout the whole case. And I believe it's just a matter of time before we truly begin to view this situation as a blessing in disguise. Anyway, gentlemen, I really appreciate you being here. I hope this update was enjoyable. Please remember to like and subscribe if you did. It truly means so much.